could just get this one piece, this one piece right here, it won't, it's so close. Like I can kind of feel it working, but it's, this is all stuck together. Oh, well, what can you do? Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Technical difficulties here with the main camera. So using the phone, keeping it casual here to film this video. <laughs> it's the garden tour time. Great time to not have the main camera. I worked through a lot of rain over the last few days and tried to not use the nice big mirrorless camera in the rain, but I think some water got in the lens and it needs some more time to dry out. So it's, it's fine. Quality wise, I don't think you'll even really be able to tell it much of a difference. Technology is so good with homes these days. What's going on? Everybody having a good time? You having fun in your gardens? It has been a crazy couple of months here. Didn't really get to do a tour for everybody in, what was it, March, right? Didn't do one in March, kind of walked around, but there's just too much going on. Too much going on to talk about. Is there still a dog under here? Yep, thought so. Haven't really been able to focus on the yard work all the way. Hey baby, what you doing? Yeah, I was talking about you. Come out to say hello. I know the sun is very strong and he's not allowed in the pool right now. Thinking this tour is going to be more of a, hey, let's catch up. A lot has changed between the last garden tour, which was probably October, I think, maybe November. And now there's been a lot going on out here. Not so much with the gardens, got a few things done. More so with the bones of everything out here. I know for a lot of people, this may end up being redundant because you watch the videos on a regular occasion, but there are some of y'all who just stop in for the garden tours. That's why I wanted to just go over what's changed out here. For starters, I got a new hose. Doesn't fit in the hose reel, so I have to take it back, but it's out there. That's why I have it spread out. I have to coil it back up to return it. So I'm hoping the sun's gonna loosen it up. So pardon that, there's going to be some messes out here. Oh, that's not really what the big change is. Big change has got a new coating out here on the patio. Things were starting to get pretty dingy. It was a big project, getting everything moved off and cleaned up and multi-day process. You know, the patio had been the same for like a decade and things accumulate in piles and corners. It was really good to have that hard reset to get everything off of here, get it nice and clean with the power washer and have a nice fresh coating put down. Not really a fan of the color. The people who did it said it was going to be darker than the coping on the pool, which it's not. It's much lighter and it is blinding very 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 blinding i have to keep sunglasses on at all times out here or else i go inside and see spots for hours they said it'll darken up we will see it's been a month and it's still pretty dang bright but it's nice and fresh doesn't necessarily look so clean because absolutely everything shows on it that's another problem with it is i do a lot of work out here there's always dirt and stuff moving around and i'm blowing this deck off about twice a day right now to keep things looking nice i blew it off about 20 minutes ago before filming because I wanted it to look nice, but you know, it's just that time of year. Stuff keeps falling. There's going to be messes. Overall, I am happy with the change because things are clean. And like I said, it's that hard reset, which is something that's necessary from time to time. Say, go ahead and get everything moved out and start all over. It's kind of like putting down a new floor in the house. Had to move everything out of here. That's why I still don't have pots set over here. I moved the hydrangea trees back. I had them set way back into the garden because, you know, everything had to be moved off the patio. Haven't gotten around to moving the other planters back over yet because I'm still waiting to hear back from the company who did this about possibly going a coat or two darker. So that's why there are gonna be some things that haven't been done yet that I probably could do, but just don't want to because I don't want to pile a bunch of stuff up on the patio if I'm gonna have to move it again. Love the bamboo planters hanging out off the patio. They were over here. I have picked up and gotten everything mostly put back together from the project of moving everything off the patio from about right here all the way through to here and here is where i've stopped and i still need to do this corner of everything over here so things are a mess because this is all stuff that was spread around the patio that i had to get moved off the patio i have a lot of pottery over here i'm going to end up getting rid of donating cleaning this whole area out and then probably going to keep the bamboo planters over here i'm thinking i used to keep them up on the patio so this isn't like <laughs> you know some kind of revolutionary thing here but instead of keeping on them, them on the patio almost lost my words there I'm just gonna scoot them back let them hang out in what is supposed to be drainage over here the problem with the setup i had here with the containers the pots like this is where i was storing lots of little pots is that well one the shelf fell apart so that wasn't working you can see that just looks fantastic doesn't it no not really and when i had the bamboo planters actually in front of these i couldn't really get to them so it wasn't all that practical and then the next issue is that this is all supposed to be open for drainage. Water all comes from all these houses up the hill 
and over there and it comes down here. This is full of gravel underneath all these leaves, but it's really hard to clean this out and keep the leaves out of it when I have all this stuff to work around. So since I haven't really been needing any of these small pots, I'm just gonna pick out a few that I wouldn't wanna get rid of and the rest, I'm going to be giving those away. So that's gonna clear all this out and then I will more than likely push those bamboo planters back into that gravel bed, depending on the sunlight. I think if I were to just prune off this one branch from this pine tree up here, and that would open up more light, potentially. I can't really do anything about all the limbs that are up there. Maybe I could, I don't know. I have a pole saw, but it's not that big. It's pretty big, I think it's 12 feet, but even on a 12 foot ladder, I don't think that would reach that high. Just need to just shave some things back so that things aren't too shaded in this spot. If it's gonna to be too shaded, then I'll go ahead and pull them forward. I know it doesn't seem like it'd make a difference, but just that two feet forward, I think will keep them happier. The bamboo themselves, they did great last winter. It's something I really, yeah, this is the first garden tour of the year, so I need to talk about how things did over winter, right? We haven't talked about that. It's not in depth. So last year I wrapped the pots in the heat cables, just, you know, the kind you put on your roof, cheap ones wrapped them around there and then put bags over them during the really cold freeze that we had in January, that like two weeks where we were below zero degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, that did shockingly well for them. I will probably be doing this every year now. If it's going to drop below, I would say five degrees because they're in containers. It's the yellow growth bamboo, super cold hardy, but they're in containers and they had some really bad damage the winter of 2023 and they did some recovering the next year, but they really thinned out a lot. But having them in that container, not the, in the container, it was the bags in the heat cables, that really made a huge difference as far as their spring outcome. I had sensors in there. I don't think it ever dropped below 18 inside of there. I didn't have a sensor down in the middle of the pots to measure the soil temperature, but it didn't drop below 18 inside the bags. It was probably, I want to say, it had to be above, above zero, right, in those containers. Look at how much these have flushed out this year. I mean, come on, look at that. These are, they're full of shoots. Tons and tons of them. I know they're buried back in there, but that's for a reason. It does make it harder to see them because everything's all tucked way back in there, but that is working out to my advantage. Most years when the bamboo puts up fresh growth, you know, those shoots, they tend to be really soft for the first few weeks, but really until they start to go ahead and drop their branches that the shoots start to harden up. And we have storms every single year that end up breaking the shoots as they're coming up. So keeping them back here has worked out really, really well. I've wanted to move them forward and go ahead and just gut the spot and get this done because it's ugly. And well, I guess I could do it regardless. I just haven't. <laughs> it's not like I have to wait to move the bamboo planters to clean that spot up. Been doing other things. We're gonna be talking about all that. We already have been talking about it. It's supporting the shoots and keeping them safe and protected so nothing's breaking. And these are the biggest they've ever been. I mean, one of these has a shoot that's gotta be at least, I would say 10 to 12 foot tall. That's what I've always wanted out of these containers is to start to get those nice big canes on there. I think we're finally gonna get that this year. Gonna to have to do some thinning down low if I wanna plant annuals in them this year. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. It's not really something I'm worried about just yet. So the overwintering with the bag and the heat cables, huge success. That worked out great. I haven't moved a lot of the tropicals out, but I did move out uh, one of the Dracenas just because it was in the house and a spot where it was really hard to water because I'm having new floors put in and uh, it just seemed better to go ahead and bring it out. It's gotten some sun damage on it. I have it tucked back just about as far as I can. The bulk of it looks pretty good. It's all the way back in there. I'm trying to protect it from the sun just part of it, right? You move a plant outside, you don't want to stick them right into the sun. I have a bunch of yews over here that are ready to be planted up. I got these last fall and just hadn't gotten around to it. I was thinking that I will probably end up doing a video where I come in here, gut this whole area out, clean up everything on this hill and landscape it because it's something I've wanted to do for years and I think it'd be fun to have it all in one video. So I'm just waiting for a few more plants to come in. One of these yews, I, don't, I, I, I watered it in the next day. It's just, you, I'm dying. I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm grateful. You don't know what the problem with that was. The other ones are fine. You know, that happens. The use and arbs, you plant a whole bunch of them, you usually lose a couple of them, more so with arbs than with the use. What else? I have started to move just a few of the plants out from the garage, mostly because they were in the way of <laughs> getting other things out and I had to. The croton looking not too bad considering I didn't really do anything for it over the winter. I need to restake it. I think I'm actually going to repot it, give it some fresh soil. I don't 
think it's doing much with that mix I have in there. It's draining, I think, just a smidge too fast. This whole area is my rehab area, things that have to be sprayed down and repotted. This Dracaena reflexa down here had a few spider mites on it, not too many, but there was some stuff going on in there, so that's why it's on its side, because I keep hitting it. Right now I'm just blasting, I'm not spraying, I'm really cautious about using anything, even neem outside this time of year, so right now I'm just blasting to get everything off. Same thing here with the spindle palm, I had a bunch of mealybugs on it, and I have been keeping that mostly secluded from everything, and then when I need to blast it off, just laying it down and using high pressure to get all the bugs off of them. Trying flower bags this year, I have to say, so far, I don't like them. Watering them takes an eternity. You have to, you know, you give them a splash, you wait. You give them a splash, you wait. Do that about 10, 15 times, maybe you will have gotten it watered. The only thing I have found to really keep them hydrated is to take them off and soak them. That's been working really well. I think once I have my drip system up and running, that won't be an issue. Once they're on drip, they won't be as high maintenance. They shouldn't be. The drip, that all goes back to talking about the irrigation. I'm redoing all of it this year. Everything's just, be it's become a disaster. <laughs> you know, you have 10 years, you're constantly adding and taking away and things have a couple or something just splash. What just splash? Is there a critter in the pool? And it's just hoses and lines everywhere. There are a few that are in the ground still. And I don't even know what they go to. I hook them up and nothing happens. So that's why I figure, you know, I've had to do all this other stuff to gut the patio just rip it all up and start over. It makes the most sense to really do things more efficiently. I have terrible water pressure, so having things laid out appropriately makes a tremendous difference as far as the efficacy of even having drip out here. If it's not something that makes sense, you know, if you have too many things on one line, you don't have enough water pressure, if you have too many splits or the line's too long, so many variables. I'm going to be taking out a lot of it, replacing with one inch drip hose, which is going to have much higher pressure and I can get more lines run off of them and just have less mess right that looks terrible the sand is there because i'm going to be putting all the sand out when the palm trees come back from the greenhouse and that won't be for i don't know probably another three weeks i'm guessing so that's they can just hang out there for now back here i had planted this is a part i didn't finish the irrigation stuff the irrigation all leads over to this spot over here so i've been moving things around and trying to excavate a giant flagstone that's become buried over the years from you know, mulching and just weather and whatnot and going to put a new hose reel over here and it's it's a whole thing so i also had a new cable run for the house and that's underneath everything there's just there's so much going on so many moving pieces to the puzzle where i'm like working on one spot and then another it's a lot so there's a mess over here just don't worry about it get that all fixed up when the irrigation system gets sorted out over here Last fall, I had planted last minute perennials in the ground in this spot because it tends to be a warmer corner. So I had gotten in late season, received in the mail, I should say, some uh, Hedicium Slim's Orange, which is a small butterfly ginger, they're only like three feet tall. And uh, I believe some hibiscus and I have a Colocasia Waikiki in here. That isn't, I don't know, I don't think that survived, but just now starting to see some action from that hibiscus. So I need to dig that up and place it where I want it to go. And the Slim's Orange Hedichiums, they're doing something too, which I was really surprised by. I didn't think that those would really do all that well because they got planted so late, but there they are. Everything's overshadowed by the tulips, which obviously there's not much to look at with the tulips right now, but I can't pull them just yet. They need a few more weeks to brown out before I can do anything in this spot, so just kind of embracing the mess for now and see the drip lines See what i'm talking about there's one two three drip lines here and i know there's another one buried under here deeper i just i gotta get it all out of here and start over oh banana cannas they're coming up that's always exciting they started popping up about a month ago probably same thing with the colocasia bikini teenies i was worried about these i wasn't seeing any action from them until like two or three days ago which is pretty late normally those start to shoot up i want to say I don't know, mid-April, something like that. They usually start coming up right when the bananas start coming up, but nothing. They just were sitting there, but we've got enough heat and enough rain that they started to do something. Sable miners, these took a huge hit this winter. I kept them covered during the coldest part of the year, had lights around them. It was really only for that two-week period, but still, they almost completely defoliated, and they're starting to recover, recover nicely. The foliage that they're putting out to start with looks okay. I'm glad that this is not one of the varieties of sable miners that grow like snails. They all grow pretty slowly, 
but whichever these are i don't know what type they are they're just sable miners and they're growing fairly fast and it shot this one up in just like i don't know six weeks something like that that went from a spear to being all the way up here that's pretty fast for a sable miner in the early spring when the heat hasn't even rolled in that's the thing is it's not even warm yet and they're flushing out really fast little gem magnolia uh, I don't know about this one. You know, I planted it here a couple of years ago and I was so excited about it. But each winter, it's just getting knocked back and taking a terrible beating. It's starting to flush back out. I came in here and was ready to do a hard prune on it, but there is enough flex in the ends of the branches that I decided not to. When you have an evergreen that has winter dieback on it, you just gotta feel and find out where there's green, where there's brown and cut just below the brown into the green sometimes even go back by like 50 percent if not more and get them to flush back out but it's starting to flush back out on its own i'm maybe gonna give this another year but my gut is telling me to just dig it up and plop it somewhere else in the landscape because it's just it's not like in this location i think it's probably a combination of the harsh afternoon sun and the air just like beating the crap out of it during the winter time the dry air I'm not really sure. Little Gem's not one of the hardier ones. I'm 7A, so you should be hardy here, but it's pretty normal if you live in this area for your Little Gems to take a beating in the wintertime when we drop below zero. Typically mild in the teens, 20s, 30s during the winter time, but then we just have these random days that usually show up when it's been in the 50s. So we'll go from like being 50 to negative 12. They don't like that. <laughs> None of the plants like that, but this particular plant just has not been able to handle that at all i have been uh, debating pulling it and uh, replanting this spot with a fort mcnair chestnut buckeye awesome trees i have one over here want to see the flowers it's a beautiful plant i don't really know why i asked if you want to see the flowers because this is not a live video i'm going to show them to you anyways isn't that beautiful great 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 trees there's the name fort mcnair red horse chestnut it's a type of buckeye they have these beautiful tropical leaves on them kind of reminiscent of a chefalera sort of and the spring flowers on them are absolutely stunning I mean, come on isn't that just freaking beautiful and i had wanted something evergreen in this spot and that's definitely not an evergreen but the buckeyes flush out really early in the year sometime in march typically they start to flush out and they're flowering by april sometimes they start to push out their stuff even in late february their leaves that is and they tend to hold on to them pretty late into the fall so yeah, it's not evergreen, but it's kind of green. That didn't make any sense. It would hold its leaves for the majority of the year. I think I'd be okay with it. It would be beautiful over here too. They typically have more of an umbrella to a rounded growth habit to them. So just imagine, pretend that stuff's not there. Just ignore it. And the big umbrella shape to it in this spot. I think that'd look really nice. And then covered with those big pink and yellow flowers in the springtime. Seems like a good spot for it it's gonna have to go somewhere so why not put it right here and then over here i have been working on moving some things around now, last year i had a clump of black bamboo the philostachys nigra right here in the front that i had been waiting for it to develop for a few years for it to get big enough to move it and then i moved it to the back over here and this was the first winter it's gone through that's really when you have to test things out or really i should say it's when you find out how well that transplant went isn't until the next year and i'd say it went okay there's a lot of dead stuff on the inside but look at how much green is flushing out from down below on the inside as well the black bamboo for me i always have tons of winter damage on it it's not anywhere near as cold hardy for me as the yellow it's not as cold hardy as yellow period for anybody so I'm not at all surprised by the amount of dieback in there. I'd say that's about what I would have expected with the cold that we had. And it's prolific. We've got a clump here. It's shooting some stuff up over here. Another clump over there. Some stuff right here that I need to pull out. And you can see there's some coming up from over here. And even some more popping up over here. All that random stuff that comes up far away from the main clump. I just take a spade and chop it and lift them right out. The sooner you do it, the better. Bamboo is not something to be afraid of. It's just something you have to stay on top of. So that's going well doing what I want it to do, being back towards the wall and not up in the front of the garden bed. Similarly, the banana trees had started to move their way forward to the front of this garden bed, and it's been bugging me. I talked in other videos about how when you have a clump for so many years and they fruit and they flower and die back, so you know, if they put on inflorescence, then that main 
growth on it dies you end up with just big banana donuts instead of clumps it makes it so much more difficult or expensive and time consuming i should say to protect the clumps when all the growths are in a big ring instead of having them more in a tight circle i don't know if that made sense i don't fully know how to explain it basically my bananas were growing like this and that meant i had to bring in unbelievable amounts of mulch to really efficiently like preserve a lot of the pseudostem for the, a gigantic area whereas if they're in a clump like you want them to be you can just make a nice big mound makes things so much easier so these growths right here they were all coming up in the front and i went ahead and just chopped them dug them up moved them to the back it's been about four days and the growth on them is still pushing so i think it's going to be okay i was <laughs> kind of concerned that maybe i had chopped up the root too much things got a little sloppy it was getting late wait until the video that comes out after this one and you'll see what was going on there it was an interesting night but uh it got moved and i didn't know how it would do it's doing okay and set Morelia. This is a red banana that I overwintered in the garage. Just now got that put in the ground four days ago when I put that one in the ground. And it's so happy. It's amazing when you bring them outside how fast they just start to push up new growth. It only had this one on it when I brought it out here four days ago and that one was starting to unravel. That's fully unraveled. Has another one coming up. The insets when I overwinter them I don't go over the top like I used to where I'd keep them in a container and keep them watered and all that mess. It's, it's too much. I don't do that. I don't like messing with all that stuff anymore. I just dig them up, cut them, get as much of the roots off and mud off the bottom as I can. I stick them someplace cool, dark, and dry. But you have to get them moving and growing again within a few months. They don't work that well stored dormant for a very long time. They start to rot very easily. That's why I only have one out here. I took two in. One of them made the cut. The other one got too much moisture on the bottom of its root ball and died. That's okay. I have another one because originally... I had these flanking this pathway here, so I'll get another one put over there. I have the pot in the plant, the plant in the, the pot, the, no, <laughs> the plant is in a pot in the container waiting to be planted on the other side of the patio. Just haven't gotten around to doing anything with the garden over on that end yet. So just working on this spot. The dune grass is coming up beautifully. Don't you just love the dune grass? And imagine it without that drip line in there. So remember, I'm talking, we got to get rid of all that and reroute it through the back so it's not visible make it nice again but it's doing its thing it's starting to get swoopy habit i came in here and pruned out all that dead stuff from the winter time probably a month ago and then the warmth and some rain showed up and they started flushing out one thing i'm disappointed about in this area is i'm not seeing any of the eucamus sparkling burgundy coming up in here i had a big clump of them for years over here in this spot and last year i dug them up divided the bulbs and then laid them out into this ring so i was like well wouldn't that be beautiful the nice vase-shaped deep red bromeliad looking plants in this area but i'm I, I don't know i don't know what happened in my mind i was just like well they're close to the edge and we had those really bad colds but they're pretty close to the edge when they were over there too in that spot and there's bananas and gingers and things that have come up from over here that are less hardy than the eucamus so maybe i'm just being impatient but i feel like those almost always start to come up for me about the exact same time as the bananas and the bikini teeny colocasias but the bikini teeny colocasias are coming up late too, despite it being a very warm March and a, it wasn't really a warm April. It was a cool April with some warm days mixed in. The ground's been warm enough. It's been in the 50s and 60s, 65 sometimes. We have a few warm days back to back, but the ground temperature's been warm to get them moving. I haven't seen anything yet, but fingers crossed they'll start to do something eventually. On the note of transplanting things, I had the... I think it's called the Candy Crush Hibiscus over here. It's one of the machetos, mosquitoes, you know, the big hardy hibiscus that die back to the ground. It's one from Proven Winters. It has really big bubblegum pink flowers on it. That's been in this spot for a few years now. It reached a size last year that I thought was great, and it started to flower and looked beautiful probably around, I'd say, mid-July to maybe early August. And then the bananas had some good size on them, and then the angle of the sun shifted. So the trees started to block the sun some more. And it started to look like garbage because it was a sun-loving plant that wasn't getting enough sun. So it started to get covered in sooty mold. You just don't want sun-loving plants taking shade. They become weak and they attract pests. So I dug that up. Dug it up and moved it down here. I can go ahead and cut back the 
old wood on there that doesn't need to be there anymore. I left it there because it makes it easier to dig them up and move them. Got a lot of growth coming out of it. I think that's going to look really nice in this spot. Pardon the shovels. I'll move the shovels. They'll get out of here eventually. Isn't that nice big? About four foot by three foot mound just covered in those bright pink flowers. It's going to look so nice, especially with the honeysuckle in the background. This is a major Wheeler honeysuckle that got transplanted over here just a few years ago. Used to be over on my hill over here. On, there's an arch that went over each side of those steps that are not in focus. You get it. It had been a nuisance area where the arbor thing just wasn't working and it just seemed better to go ahead and just move it. So I moved it. It's growing up the side of the fence over here, attaching itself to the house. It's probably not a great thing, but I'm gonna let it do it because it's beautiful. Didn't do much last year or the year before because it had just been transplanted, but we're on year three now and it's looking good. I mean, look at all those flowers. The Major Wheelers, my absolute favorite honeysuckle because of the color that they have, that beautiful coral with an orange throat, trumpet-shaped flowers, and it's a good rebloomer. I usually get at least three big flushes of flowers out of this one a year. I don't notice the fragrance. Some people say that they smell nice, that honeysuckle in general smells nice. I've never noticed that, but you like the way honeysuckle smells, maybe you can smell it. It'd be a fun one to have around. I don't know. Peony. I did not plant this. I did plant a bagged root peony about 10 years ago that was, I think, called like Maui Sunset, something like that, Coral Sunset. It's a really common one that has really big coral flowers. They have a nice orangey coral outer petal that fades to more orange in the center. And uh, this is why I don't like buying the bagged root plants, because you wait a long time for them to do their thing, and sometimes it's not the right plant. So here we are. This is the first year it's probably about seven years, but still, seven years waited for that one little root to grow into a nice bushy peony. And this is what I've got, which is still beautiful, but it's not what I wanted. So I will likely be digging that up and giving it away to someone because I don't, it's taking up space. It's not something I've wanted. Why have something that takes up space if you don't want it, right? Nothing to see over here. I haven't done anything with it yet. It's just the area that is a disaster. It looked beautiful when the tulips were in bloom. The weeds are starting to show up. I did some pulling on those yesterday. We've had some more rains so early, so I'm going to go ahead and do some more work on those later. They have a big, they have, I have a big palm tree that goes right here, and then this whole area will get landscaped when that shows up. Not a lot else going on in the garden that y'all probably don't know about if you keep up on the videos, other than the gingers. Well, they're coming up. These are Hedicium, no, 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 no. Zingiber Myoga, Dancing Crane, and Silver Arrow had a huge dieback on these winter of 2023 and uh, I didn't do a lot to protect them this year because I was like you know if they're gonna work over here they're gonna have to work over here I can only do so much mulching in the fall and uh, despite that really bad cold that we had getting a nice big flush out of them which is great at least from the ones that are down further what do I talk about do I move hmm. <laughs> sorry had to reboot my brain I am probably going to move these, which is unfortunate because it takes them about three years to get really big and full. And here we are on year three, move actually year four, I believe. But they're just not getting enough sun. They are going to want more light than they're getting over here. The maple tree, you know, it's just going to keep growing. It's just going to keep getting bigger and there's not going to be a light for them. So you can see the ones that are down here on the end. Got a nice big clump of them coming up and the further down you go the less is coming up. And that's all because I, the sun, right? It's got to be about the sun. This is all extra pottery that was sitting on the patio that had to get moved off the patio when it was being resurfaced. And that's just, that's where it ended up. There's no rhyme or reason for it to be there. It's just where it had to go. I have some things that we're planting up in a couple of those. And I think a couple of them I'm going to be giving away. This down here, Hosta coming up that I knew the name of right before I started talking about it. And it completely jumped off my tongue. What, who are you? Well, I don't remember, but I talk about it in all the garden tours. It's one of my favorites. It doesn't have a lot of variegation on it yet, but it's starting to get there. It's one that just has a nice streak of variegation in the center of the leaves that looks like it's just been gently painted into the middle. I'm just happy it's coming up. Rough winter. It's doing okay. All right, the big berm and the laurel hedge. These are what I was the most concerned about dying in the winter. If you watch the channel, you know I went to great lengths to protect these. By great lengths, I mean I wrapped them in light bulbs and put big bags around them, which is not easy to do. These are pretty big. They're pushing eight feet tall. You know, the hedge I had out here before, maybe you don't know, I had a laurel hedge out here. It got killed back that winter of 2023. So this was all replanted last year. And I went with ones that were bigger than the ones that died off. I was so excited about doing that. That's not something you can do very often, right? If you have a nice, big, beautiful, established plant die, 
you replant, you're usually set back, going with things that are smaller. These were bigger, and they're just now flushing out with their growth, like just now. I was out here yesterday going, why don't these have more growth on them? And since then, I think we got uh, two inches of rain last night, something like that. I think that did something for them. And you can see all that nice green growth starting to pop out of them. There's some winter damage, and then more so down on that end, but not bad considering we were two weeks below zero. You know, those laurels, these are skip laurels. They don't like that. It's mostly that swing I was talking about with the little gem magnolia where it's, you know, in the 50s, which it was, it was in the 50s and then just poof, <laughs> down to negative 12 and stayed in the negatives for several days. And they pulled through it. They did okay. And I'm glad that I figured out a method that seemed to work for them. Just the lights and the bag did the trick for the most part. There's some winter damage, but I'll take it. Right, if the alternative is them just dying to the ground, they can have some brown growth on them. That's not the end of the world. They already did their flowering. It wasn't a big show like it usually is. They held their flowers in fairly far. Normally they have these white wisps that come out, wisps, wisps, <laughs> wisps, that come out and they smell really nice. The pollinators love them. They held them in kind of tight and their new growth is coming out kind of tight too. So I think the plants seem to think that they died back, even though they really didn't because a lot of the new growth is coming out from the inside instead of on the tips. With the exception of this one, the other ones it's flushing up more from the inside, which is okay too. I just wanted to make sure that they're alive and they're growing, and they are. Now if they're flushing out with new growth, that's when you know you're in the clear. Sometimes with evergreens, it can take a long time for them to show their winter damage. So like I said, it's not until I start to see the new growth on that I can take a deep breath and go, oh, okay, they're okay. Uh, Butterburrs, Pedicides, Japonicus have the variegated ones. And then I think this one's called Curly Q or Gigantium over here. They're doing their thing. Uh, I tend to pull all these out from the front around this time of year and fill this in with impatience right now. There are a lot of tulips in here. You can't see it because the pedicides are coming over them. There was a beautiful show. These are the Morris Gudnov tulips <laughs> that are in here. You can't tell. It was a beautiful show of yellow and orangey colored big double like, peony like tulips. It was really nice looking while they were doing their thing. Don't think there's quite enough sun over here for them, so I probably won't be doing that again next year. I'll be pulling these bulbs up. I'm going to try them somewhere else. I'm going to give these a few more weeks to die back and then get the impatience plopped in there. This is all assuming that I have the patience to wait, though, because I would like to get the impatience put in there like this weekend. So I might just be pulling up the tulips prematurely and just hoping that they do their best and they can replant them in the fall. We'll see. It's not really how you're supposed to do things, but... I need to get moving in this area. I don't really want to wait much longer for those to die back. Speaking of winter dieback with the laurel hedge, all these ewes back here got planted up out here last year, and four of them vanished. Well, three of them vanished. One of them died. It's still over there. I haven't replanted yet, but I did go to the store. I think that was in the video that came out just before this one. Picked up some new ones that are about the same size as the others. That's one that died. The others, I think, got trampled by the dogs and then somehow got mixed up with all the leaf cleanup this spring. I don't know. They just, van like, three of them just disappeared. I don't know where they went. I know. That's not normal, but that's what happened. It's okay, though. I have new ones to put in here. I have two more in the driveway, so we're going to be really filling this in. The only reason I even have a U-hedge on the back here is because I just have this deep-rooted paranoia about another really bad winter killing off this beautiful laurel hedge. And if that happens again, this way I'll at least have something back here for some privacy. It's going to be a few more years for these to do much, but you know, this is how it works. You got to get them in the ground, wait a few years, in three to five years, these should have easily tripled in size. They'll be probably right about here. I'll be glad that they're there. It's a little bit weird to have things double hedged, but it just makes me feel better. It's like a security blanket for me, knowing that I have this extra hedge back here. And I'll probably always keep it cut right around here. And then if anything bad ever happens to the laurel hedge, I'll stop cutting them and let them get bigger. So it'll be like a tiered hedge. And this should add some winter protection for them too. The U's, these are good to zone four, I believe. These are, are they the Hixii or are these the Hillii? The Hillis. I can't remember. Where's the tag? Hixii. Great U's. The Hillii's, Hillis, they are kind of the same thing. The Hillii's just stay smaller. The Hixii's, I think they go eight to 12 feet. They have more of a columnar growth. So you need to plant them fairly close together. Hardy is zone four. In some places, they are invasive, so you need to check where you have before planting them, and they are toxic. So I know there are some issues, and maybe it's Idaho or Utah where they're spreading and deer eating them and dying. So it's something to keep in mind. Uh, but it's great, like the birds love to nest in them. They're usually pretty inexpensive. You can hedge them up real nice. They tend to be pretty long lived. So I'm excited about getting all that replanted and doing some cleanup in here with the pedicides too. I'm going to let them do their thing and fill in 
but I need to clear them out from around the U's because that's not good for them, right? They need airflow. Japanese maple. Looking great. Took it in during the winter. I have it in this gorgeous, gigantic Venetian pot over here that I've had since the 90s. This was given to me by my parents when I was just a kid, a little kid. It's old enough that I don't want to move the container around, so I just have it set here in the garden. And I lift the Japanese maple out of it when it drops below five, move it into the garage. I say that like it's something I've always done. This is the first winter that I did that, and it worked out fine. It was in the garage for maybe two weeks, something like that, when we had the cold that was affecting everything. Looks pretty good. Flushed out. I like having the red over here. Because of that, I also popped a... Where is it? There it is. Ridiculous coleus in the back there. So there's going to be some more red to fill up. This one will go about 40 inches in this area. So it'll fill up a nice big space. I popped a pulmonaria down here. I think this one's called like shrimp on the Barbie, something like that. It's out of flower right now. It has some buds getting ready to come up, but it's a really nice kind of bubblegum pink flower that has a magenta tone towards the bottom. I love the foliage on a pulmonaria. This is supposed to be a shade garden over here. I just got it cleaned out. I think this will all be in the video that comes out after the first of the perennials I'm starting to get put in here. I had begonias popped in here last year and the dogs trampled them and dug them up so I doubt they'll come back but time will tell we'll see I hope they do if not I can replant them they were the begonia smooch really beautiful begonia also popped in acanthus down here this is acanthus mollus oak leaf the oak leaf acanthus this is the plant I have been talking about a lot this year because they're beautiful look at those leaves beautiful shiny heavy lobes they look a lot like a philodendron to me a philodendron dupe you live someplace where you can't grow the tropicals because they have that nice big rosette shape these leaves will get even longer this is probably going to quadruple in size this year hopefully i have four of these smaller ones they're in one gallon containers i'm going to be placing in different spots in the garden and experimenting to see where they do the best because they're a plant where they tend to not do great when it gets really hot if you live in a humid climate like i do so around july you tend to see a fizzle on them. So it's hard to find the balance of giving them enough light while also making sure they have protection from the sun when things get really, really harsh outside. That's why I have a bunch so I can spread them around see where they do their best. Wherever they do the best, I'm gonna be adding more. So I would like to have a whole drift of a canthus. They have these big, beautiful spires on them. The flowers, they come up with these spikes. It's so pretty, they just look nice. So that's the first one I got in the ground right there. Last year, this entire area was all lawn from right here all the way up and over. I uh, went through, added about eight inches of uh, compost and mulch top swell to turn this into a garden bed. None of it was on camera because it's awkward because I'm just looking right into my neighbor's backyard at this point. I don't even like filming over here, but I want to turn this into a garden bed. So everything that's over here is new. Um, some of them are weeds like that. That's, that's a weed. Didn't plant that there. But I planted five of the game changer hydrangeas in here. And of those five, one survived the winter just this one it's just now starting to come up don't know what that's about i'm thinking maybe because it's a new bed so those soils may be draining too quickly and they dried out too much during the winter that would be my guess it just haven't gotten enough actual soil in there and i went really heavy with the mulch when i put this in there because i was mulching over grass right so there's like probably three to four inches of garden soil with a dusting of compost on top and then like six inches of mulch so I probably just didn't go deep enough down with things when I planted them. Now I know I'll go deeper and they, all that mulch that was put in there last year, that eight inches of everything, maybe it was four, whatever, that will broken down by now at this point and it's going to start to become more soil-like over here. Sometimes it takes a few years to start a big garden bed when you're going right over grass unless you dig up the whole area, which, you know, my ass wouldn't do that. There was a beautiful show of daffodils and tulips over here. They're gone now. You know, it's May. I mean, technically for me, it's April, but when this video comes out, it's May. So they're fizzling out. This whole area is going to get planted up with annuals and some perennials. I have some more hydrangeas to maybe work in over here, but I might be putting them in a different spot. I haven't decided yet. The buckeye looking beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Red buckeye. That's the spring growth on it. It has a pretty wild and wonky shape to it. Also noticing that there's a random tree growing up out of the middle that I need to trim out of there. It had many years growing without enough light because there used to be a ton of trees right here, birch trees and shrubbery on the other side of that fence. That was all cut down so that they put in a pool, right? So now it's getting light. I'm gonna let it go, I don't know, a month or two. I'm gonna wait for the flowers to dry up off there and give this a hard cut back, get the shape set right on it so it has a better chance to start to flush out and look appropriate. So right now it's just leaning and 
lanky from all those years of not having enough light, but now it can go ahead and reset and start to look like a nice round tree the way it should look. Dropped a couple of Borneo giant alocasias in the ground up here just a day or two ago, and they haven't done much. I don't expect them to, but they're holding on. <laughs> That's the thing. When you move an alocasia or a calocasia, it's always about those first several days. Like, are you going to drop that leaf? Are you going to wilt and throw a fit? So far, they're looking good. I dug those holes double wide, made sure that the soil there back foot with is one that drains really well. It's been amended with some cotton burr compost and slow release. I think they should put on a pretty good show this year. I know they're hard to see. I just feel so awkward over here because like, I feel like I'm in somebody else's backyard. So that's as good as a shot you're going to get in this video. There's not much to see yet, right? Because they're brand new. And that's it. It's just a leaf. Popped a Tritoscantia in the ground over here. This one is called JS Brainstorm. It's a typical perennial type Tritoscantia with a nice purple flower on it. The JS Brainstorm is one that's supposed to be a very heavy repeat bloomer from the start when it starts to bloom all the way until frost. That's why I put that there. I think that'll fill in that area nicely. I like the foliage on them as well. It's a nice limey green. Behind them, I have a supposed perennial Colocasia. Just gonna have to watch the next video after this one for me to talk about that because it turns into kind of a conspiracy theory rant thing about that one. And I don't wanna go into that in this video, uh, but there's a good amount of talking about it in the video that will be out after this one. Don't think there's anything new going on over here. The bonsais and pre-bonsais, they're doing pretty well. Need to come in and work on this one some. But everything that's in the ground is doing what it's supposed to do. Nothing really all that mind-blowing over here. Just things that did okay, survived the winter. Lespedeza right here. Some Burgii coming up, looking beautiful. Wasn't sure how it was going to do. Just got moved. It used to be over a little bit further, and it was coming out like to here on the patio. So I moved it back further so that it would just do its draping right over the front of the wall here but there's less light you know move it back further into the garden but it's buried underneath this bayberry here it seems to be doing okay with that and i think i moved it back a couple years ago so that's not even news i'm pretty sure that's old news i think that's old news agave oh I'm, you're right in my shadow picked this one up last year it was in a hall this is the lonky a beautiful variegated agave it's been out here for a while the variegation on it's kind of hard to see because I think it's, I think this is getting too much sun. I need to move this. I'm gonna stick the wonky back here for right now. It shouldn't be that white on the inside. It's supposed to be more of a lightish green with a hint of blue on the outside. And instead that's fully turning white. This is weird. I moved this out about three weeks ago and it's been totally fine, but the sun is really strong, like really strong. It's like a frying pan out here with it radiating up off the patio. Oh. Something else that's new that y'all haven't seen. Well, okay, if you're a regular watcher, you've seen it. But for the people who just in for the garden tours, you got new cushions for the glider. I, it's like my favorite thing out here so far this year. I like the new coating. That's not true. I like the new coating, this, and the next thing that I'll talk about here in a minute. It's such a big improvement. Got the nice five inch cushions. I, they're so nice. They're firm and they're cushy. I'm one of the five inch fancy people now with the big fluffy cushions that look great. Okay, what was I going to talk about next? I can't even remember. Jeez, there's actually still a lot to talk about, and I didn't want this video to be this long. It's already too long. Going to have to just uh, fire it off faster than I had planned on. Hepticodium, looking great. Got its first nice big prune this year. This went in the ground three years ago. It's been one of my favorites out here because, like I was saying with the Buckeyes, they hold under their foliage for a long time. This didn't completely defoliate until January. It wasn't until we had that cold snap that I've talked about multiple times where we were below zero that it finally dropped all of its leaves. It was mostly defoliated by December, but it held on to some, which is just nice. It's nice to look out the window and see some of those orange and yellow leaves. And it's the first thing to flush out in the springtime. You can see it's already got all of its mature foliage on it. This starts pushing them out in like late February, March. So it's not evergreen, but it's like evergreen-esque. The Hepticodiums, that's a tree that can take on a variety of shapes, but they mostly have a vase shape to them. Clean out the bottom so that there's some exposed trunk and get that crepe myrtle vibe to it without the crepe myrtle maintenance. They even have flowers that are similar-ish, kind of, to a crepe myrtle to go in this spot. Right now it's at a very annoying height though, and it's going to take a few years to get past this where it is very full directly outside the window. So it's blocking a lot of the view. But once this gets a few feet taller, you can clean up the inside so that the idea is they'll be able to look out the window and see through it instead of looking directly at it. 
Uh, I really like it. I'm a huge fan. Speaking of things that are finally coming into their own, look at the agapanthus. These were planted three years ago, and they have done nothing. They would put up their leaves in the springtime, but I wasn't getting much out of them as far as flowers go. And this year, finally got a nice, big, beautiful flower on it. I don't remember the variety name. I think it's just one that I picked up from, like, Dutch bulbs or something like that. Some place where they're relatively inexpensive. And uh, I'm happy with them. It's nice having that spring color. They're going to die back here in a few weeks. This area is going to be filled in with sun and patience, maybe some sweet potato vines. Probably going to be trying something different over here this year, maybe. I had a lot of Tritoscanthia nanooks planted in here, and they came back last year when I had planted them. They survived a winter. But when I had the surface redone out here, I had to basically dig up the patio. The Not the patio, dig up the garden. The garden over time you know gravity this had spread out to like right around there i had to cut about eight inches out of here and move it back up into the garden where it's supposed to be this is all drainage that needs to be open so that was something that was going to get done this year regardless just got it done earlier because i had to but with all that rock being piled up here and now i have my sandbags just stored over here i don't think i'm gonna be seeing anything out of those scant yet but that's okay and try something new here and i have more inside that i can plop in here if i want to I haven't even gotten that point yet. Hopefully the next week or two be getting on top of all of that. The Hedichiums, Flaming Torches, they survived. That's great. That's one that I'm always worried about. I don't know why. I've had them for probably a good 10 years now. They survive every winter, but it was just that cold snap was so bad. They're looking good, though. The entire clump is starting to move. It is migrating forward, so I might have to dig it up and move it back at some point. I don't really want to do that this year. That might be a next year thing scoop it up and move it back over there where it's supposed to be that's just what things do over time when you have bulbs and rhizomes you gotta divide and move to keep them looking nice so hopefully they'll still be looking good this year time will tell it's just not something i want to take on this year we'll see about it later on maybe i'll change my mind but i feel like the opportunity to do it is right now and i just don't have time right now by the time i will have time to do that kind of a project and I think they will flush up too high. I could be wrong. What I may end up doing is just coming in here and chopping out the ones that are right here because they're moving over more towards the middle. I don't want them over there and just moving those to the back. And that would at least get some of the dividing done. I feel like that's a compromise, a way to do things. There's still lights out here. I've gotten a lot of them picked up. I keep finding more strands of lights from the winter protection I need to move. I think that's pretty much it for this area. Oh, the Sable Miners. The ones that were over here took a much bigger hit in the winter, but they're starting to flush out with new growth. The needle palm took a fairly big hit. I went over all this in a vlog a few weeks ago. I was out here pruning them up and cleaning on them. They're okay. It's going to take them some time, but they're okay. Oh, finally. When I came out here this morning, these were all closed. And I was like, would you just open? I'm filming a garden tour here. I want you guys to be open and beautiful. Don't they look nice right next to this piling with the rope on it? That's the other big change. I feel like I'm being so redundant. Like I said, I know there are people who don't watch the videos, but tune in for the garden tours. This right here, this is all new. And doesn't it look great? I know the lighting is not fantastic this time of day. The steps were built out partially for the dogs and just safety. The steps that were attached here that were from the builder of the house, they just looked terrible. And they were difficult for the elderly, for children, and for the old dog. So they're now much bigger. They have this beautiful mosaic on the front and did a piling on the side as the mule post. Mule? Mule? Mule. Mule post. And it looks so good. It looks even better when it's not surrounded by plants. Some plants on it look good. Right now, things are pretty intense as far as the planting inventory goes. This is what I've been doing. I get some work done out here, and I go to a nursery and pick up an order or stumble upon an unbelievable sale and then have a dozen <laughs> wave petunias sitting out here. Things coming in the mail from Proven Winners. This just showed up right before I started filming. That's why the plastic's still on it. Yeah, that's what's everything over here. This is all stuff that's waiting to get planted up. I made a decent dent in this over the last few days there was more out here believe it or not but a lot of it just i can't plant until the palm trees come in from the greenhouse which should be mid to late may sometime in there there will be a robolini palm here a couple big queen palms over here the palms are on the pole just palm trees everywhere and a lot of what's here is stuff that are going to be using those containers so that's i can't can't really do much with them just need to hold on to them the perennials are over here. Some of them have been planted up, still waiting on some. These have all been in plant halls. Some of them you don't know about, but we'll be talking about in the video that comes out after this. And I think that that's everything. 
if you you're curious about anything you're seeing over here tune into the last few videos where all the haul videos have been or maybe it'll be in the video that comes out after this it would take an eternity to go through everything that's over here be seeing it over the next few weeks as i'm planting things up and doing things with them right right now i just trying to keep them together so it's easier to maintain and keep water got some new stuff over here been cleaning up some of the yuccas getting them repotted move the moose of florida out it's got some scorch on it but it's okay the growth on it's still small enough that i was like i'm just taking you out to the sun you're gonna throw out a new leaf and it will be fine with the new lighting and the other stuff will die off it's okay i think that that is everything do we love the new steps thoughts i think it looks nice very tropical very beachy love the new cushions on the glider the new coating on the patio i think it looks beautiful it just isn't functioning well with my vision but i do like it lots of fun stuff going on out here oh and this is going to be moved in a few weeks and there's a assuming it survived the winter at the greenhouse there's a about a 12 foot tall edinidia palm that'll be over here so there won't be leaves right in your face when you walk out the door they'll be up above the head i think that'll be exciting i can't wait for the palm trees to come back from the nursery or from the greenhouse oh it's gonna be so fun getting them placed and getting this whole entire area over here scaped lots of fun stuff to look forward to what's going on in your gardens i know i'm talking more soft now my voice is starting to get kind of hoarse there's a lot of pollen in the air i've been talking for a long time it's officially may even though this is the april garden tour things are kicking off peaks usually mother's day for most places so hopefully everybody's getting what they've been looking forward to or hoping to get planted in the gardens and just overall enjoying life. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, a great life. Everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Said that too fast, as always. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. Like I said, what's going on in your garden? It's got some fun stuff happening. Oh, I wonder if this other hibiscus is bloomed. Oh, good. It did. So when I had the haul and I picked up this hibiscus, it didn't have flowers on it. I said, y'all are just going to have to wait to see the flowers. There it is. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful orange? This is one of the, is it Harbor Breeze? I can't remember. The one I picked up is, of course, the one that doesn't have the tag all the other ones there had a tag but they weren't as full and i grabbed the one that didn't the wind swept something like that it doesn't matter if i can't remember the name it's just a really nice orange very pretty orange and a nice full bush there one that you typically only see in the little containers at like the home depot but it's nice that they're selling them now in larger pots because i never know what to do like you see those cute little ones those tiny containers at home depot I'm like that's cool and everything but what do you even do with that, with that puny little hibiscus? Sell me a big plant. I need a big plant, so have a nice full thing full of flowers. Nice full thing full of flowers. That was well said. It's time to go, as always. And most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.